welcome to AATCM. Today we will discuss cardiac failure. The definition of the cardiac failure is it is actually a complex syndrome characterized by structural and functional impairment of the ventricular filling and ejection of blood resulting in dyspnea and fatigue as the major symptoms and edema and rails as the major signs. The etiology of cardiac failure can be many but the most important ones that you should remember includes systemic hypertension, coronary artery disease, valvular heart disease and myocardial diseases. Then if you consider heart failure with the reduced ejection fraction that is the commonest variety that we see and that is the actual cardiac failure we discuss also. This was the only entity previously known to us. So the reasons for this group of cardiac failure that is with reduced ejection fraction or low output cardiac failure includes coronary artery disease, then chronic pressure overload. This actually will happen towards the end of the disease, not in the beginning stage. Then chronic volume overloads like MR, AR, VSD, PDA. Chronic lung disease usually comes to the right side of the heart, often we call it as corporal pulmonail and toxic agents can damage the myocardium or the drugs can also produce myocardial damage leading to low output cardiac failure. Infections, we know viral infections are notorious to produce viral myocarditis leading to cardiac failure. Whereas a world well known entity is Chagas disease which is also leads to low output cardiac failure. Chronic rhythm disturbances and arrhythmias are well known to produce cardiac failure. Then the second group is heart failure with the preserved ejection fraction. Here hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, systemic hypertension, endomyocardial fibrosis. In these three entities there will be stiffness of the ventricle thereby the relaxation is reduced. So the left heart has to exert more pressure leading to heart failure. The same will happen if the myocardium is infiltrated with uh, substances like proteins, especially amyloid proteins or diseases where sarcoid changes can happen to myocardium and also hemochromatosis, a failure in the or a dysfunction of the iron metabolism. So infiltration of all this into the myocardium also leads to stiffness and thereby the ejection fraction may remain normal. but the relaxation is delayed thereby a backward heart failure occurs and patient will have symptoms of heart failure. And the third group includes high output states in thyroid disease. You can see a high output state and leading to cardiac failure and the beriberi vitamin B1 deficiency and also leads to cardiac failure due to high output and anemia is a well known entity leading to cardiac failure and a shunt at the arterial level or even at the cardiac level leads to cardiac failure. Then the functional classification, when you consider the patient functional ability, we can classify heart failure into four depending upon New York Heart Association's classes. Class 1 is a patient with a cardiac disease but may not be evident with the normal physical activity or ordinary physical activity. but undue exertion can bring some symptoms and usually they will not present with the fatigue, palpitation, dyspnea or angel pain. Then class 2 group there is cardiac failure resulting in light stimulation that is small work will produce, the ordinary activity will produce problem and this group is much more common than the other. The third group is Patients with the limitation of physical activity, they are comfortable at rest, less than ordinary physical activity because they cannot take a bath or if they go for a walk inside the room itself can produce symptoms, postprandial there can have symptoms. So the fatigue, palpitation, dyspnea and gel pain occur in this group. Okay. Then the fourth group is the patient group who develop symptoms when they take rest. So their physical activities, activities will be much more limited and they will have symptoms easily. 
then coming to the most important part pathogenesis in cardiac failure there is an index event from which all this occurs especially with reduced ejection fraction so the index event can be ischemia inflammation or infiltration whatever it is and the speed with which it develops is the one that is helping us to give a diagnosis for example ischemia develops rapidly so the index event will produce a damage to the myocardium leading to myocardial dysfunction and this myocardial dysfunction leads to activation of the secondary mechanisms or compensatory mechanisms for example the compensatory mechanisms include renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism the sympathetic system and the uh, the, uh, chem the chemical system that is the uh, in the chemicals like uh, uh, bradykinins prostaglandins nitric oxide etc this activation is to compensate for a short period so that the symptoms can be masked or overcome and the heart can work for some time but if we allow the compensatory mechanism to act for a longer time there will be secondary damage to the myocardium okay now let us see what is happening with the decreased cardiac output unloading of the high pressure baroreceptors in the left ventricle carotid sinus or aortic arch this will lead to the loss of inhibitory parasympathetic tone so this parasympathetic inhibition is very important in the functioning of the normal cardia so once this inhibitory parasympathetic tone is taken away the sympathetic overactivity will result and there will be non osmotic release of arginine vasopressin avp or adh this will lead to renin angiotensin system activation peripheral vasoconstriction and myocardial remodeling so i told you previously there will be cytokine system activation as the third important compensatory mechanism so that chemicals will produce vasodilatation but these will produce vasoconstriction so again this system will win and the patient will go into more damage what are the clinical features of cardiac failure in advanced heart failure pulse rate will be increased systolic blood pressure will be normal or low respiratory rate will be increased the patient will have a labored breathing cool extremities are well known in advanced heart failure central cyanosis and elevated jvp are very commonly seen and edema is also a very common finding systemic examination at the cardiovascular system the heart sounds will be muffled third heart sound or fourth heart sound will appear with a galloping part and the chest will show crackles and in selected cases v's often we call it as cardiac asthma the pleural effusion more common on the right side or bilateral bilateral is more common in biventricular failure abdomen will show hepatomegaly that will be congestion of the liver and the tenderness is peculiar because of the uh, tension over the capsule of the liver and also liver will be pulsatile in tricuspid regurgitation ascites is seen in later cases jaundice is seen in chronic cardiac failure and in the central nervous system many, many patients will have impairment of the cognitive function due to confusion or restlessness the differential diagnosis of cardiac failure includes renal failure ARDS and other fluid overload states and uh, very often patient is coming with acute dyspnea into the casualty the x-ray will show all the congestion or the infiltrates everybody will have a confusion whether it is cardiac failure or any other entity the diagnosis uh, will start with the classical important investigation but commonly this includes the blood uh, cbs cbc because anemia is very important electrolyte disturbances are well known as a sequelae of heart failure renal failure is well known to mimic heart failure and cardiac failure is well known to produce renal dysfunction then liver function also will be altered in cardiac failure rbs very important because it can damage all the system and thyroid function test important because th thyroid 
uh, function if it is more thyrotoxic heart failure is well known lipids may act as a risk factor for developing ischemic cardiomyopathy then the biomarkers are important the acute settings especially troponin bnp or nt pro bnp the other new ones which are actually coming into the field and it's uh, thought to be important soluble st2 and galactin 3 are also useful for prognosis or explaining the symptomatology of heart failure you can say the prognosis as well diagnosis ecg is important especially in patients with uh, chronic hypertension showing ventricular hypertrophy or iatrocinosis or even in cardiomyopathies and myocardial infarction will show acute uh, changes in the voltages or uh, appearance of q waves sg segments etc arrhythmias will have rhythm disturbances you can diagnose various types of arrhythmias by seeing the ecg and conduction problems as can be a sequelae of ischemia or that can lead to heart failure X-ray will first will comment about the size and shape of the heart in congestive heart failure. Cardiac size will be increased, whereas in acute heart failure, uh, ischemic heart failure, the heart size may not be high. But the pulmonary vasculature will show evidence of fluid leak in the form of interstitial edema initially, and then goes into the in, in the alveoli as well as it can even leak into the pleural cavities, leading to pleural effusion. Echo, a very important investigation along with the Doppler, we can have regional wash, wall motion abnormalities, valvular abnormalities, chamber size, wall thickness, systolic and diastolic function problems. In uh, acute valvular damage like uh, mitral regurgitation and atrial regurgitation, the presentation itself may be as cardiac failure. Coronary angiogram is very important as evaluation of chronic heart failure because the coronary disease associated can be corrected and it often helps in the management of heart failure. Diagnosis, MRA again is important in the diagnosis as a gold standard nowadays for assessing the LV mass and volume. Also, it, it helps in infiltrating materials like amyloidosis, hemochromatosis and ischemic cardiomyopathy. Again, starting with the treatment, the most important part of the treatment is symptomatic relief. This is always achieved with the diuretics, which will immediately help. For example, if you administer frosimide, patient will have an initial venodilatation followed by diuresis. That way, the patient will say, I am better. So, this can be achieved with the potent loop diuretics like frosimide. And a long standing effect in the myocardium as well as diuresis is with the aldactone and dorsimide is similar to furosemide in the same group. The second group is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. This actually we have seen in the pathogenesis, the secondary activation is the reason for, compensatory mechanisms are the reason for further worsening of the cardiac failure. So this can be broken with the captopril, that is a short acting AC inhibitor, or enalapril, lisinopril, ramipril. But the starting dose should be very small. And it is 6.25 milligram to start with. And the tablet usually available is 25 milligram. So starting with the one fourth of the usual dose available and then gradually increasing will help us to see the effect. And always you will monitor the renal function when we start AC inhibitors. Angiotensin receptor blockers are the second group where we have seen a lot of starting with the losartan, valsartan, telmisartan, etc. These are all a second group coming in the same group and we can start with the one fourth of the tablets once daily then twice daily and gradually building up the dose monitoring the renal function and also the potassium. Beta blockers are a very important group that will block the sympathetic overactivity and the commonly used drugs include uh, bisoprolol that was the initially one used, metoprolol was also there in the field and very small dose you can see starting doses even 6.25 of metoprolol building up to 25 BD or even more depend on the patient tolerance. Bisoprolol also is a drug which has got a very good coverage over one day and you can start with the 1.25 milligram once and gradually to increase to 10 milligram a day. Carvedilol is a later one, it is very important and very good drug and we can use it with the 3.125 milligram two times daily and then you can increase to 6.25 or 12.5. 
Additional therapies include spironolactone, aldetold and lactone, then the eplirinone, that is actually a receptor antagonist of aldosterone, and that can be used along with the other drugs. Or you can use vasodilators, arterial dilators, or hydrolacin can be used. You can include nitrates into the regime because we know dilatation will help to slow down the return of blood into the heart, thereby offloading the heart. Okay. And fixed dose combinations of this uh, arterial dilator with venodilators are um, available. That is also very important in relieving the symptoms and improving the cardiac function. And a very old drug digoxin, cardiac glycoside, even now it is in use. This is especially important when chronic congestive cardiac failure is associated with the atrial fibrillation in controlling the ventricular rate. It is, a it is a positive inotropic drug as well. So, in a significant number of patients, with, especially with a large ventricle, digoxin is still effective in the management of heart failure. Statins helps by de decreasing the inflammation of the vessels and also reducing the cholesterol. Nitrates, I told you, it will decrease the venous return by venodilatation and also it can improve the coronary circulation. Anticoagulation, antiplatelets are very important because many of the patients can develop venous stasis in the lower limbs or extremities or any area leading to venous thrombosis and also it can promote arterial thrombosis as well. Fish oil is said to be important and in many patients receiving fish oil also shows good improvement but direct uh, evidence is not there but patients are taking and they have showed good improvement in the myocardial function. Micronutrients are also added like B1, selenium and other micronutrients, micro elements are added and in the diet or drugs extra to the above mentioned group. And another entity that is enhanced external counter pulsation. This is very important or three balloons were used with which it will help in the cardiac function. It is a letter one. Then the pacing, cardiac resynchronization therapy and automatic defibrillator implantation. One will help in the ventricular functioning with coordination of the ventricular function. The other will manage the arrhythmias that happens in cardiac failure. Especially this is important in NYHA class 3, 4 group with the ejection fraction less than 30 percentage. Surgical therapies include CABG, surgical ventricular repair that is ventriculoplasty or valve repair AR, MR like that. Cellular and gene therapies are the latest ones under trial and said to be effective. Left ventricular assist devices are used that is also very important and cardiac transplantation is the final one and rehabilitation includes graduated exercise therapy and also uh, psychological support to the patient and the bystanders educating them regarding the diet as well as exercise for the patient and supporting the patient. Thank you. Subscribe to ATCM Emergency Medicine on YouTube. Press the bell icon to follow us.